What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I finally wanted to bring you uh, Pulverize, or at least my version of Pulverize. I was very, very excited to start playing Druid this week um, because of the Lilith's Blessing event. Lilith's Blessing is going on this week. We got five more days of 30% or 35% increased XP, even though the tooltip only says 25%. So I took full advantage and we're in the second day and we already got our Druid to level 100 and we have our Pulverized build put together. So I wanted to go over this build, just showcase it, man, because uh, I love playing Druid and Pulverize was really the biggest build that we kind of put together back in the olden days in season zero season one so i'm having a really really fun time with the build however a few key notes that i want to talk about before we get into this with all of the gear the skills the paragon board the vampiric powers and so on so i do want to highlight real quick that this is an overpower build straight overpower it emphasizes everything on overpower and there's a few negatives to how this build works so even though we do have five ways to be able to have guaranteed overpowers in this build once you're through the rotation and you're out of overpowers it really does the damage kind of scales down significantly but with that said when you are just cruising along you're gonna be able to smash through everything this can do all nightmare dungeon 100s clear all content defeat uber lilith do durial do all of it in the end game so this is by far one of the easiest builds to put together so let's break down everything that you guys need for the build so we are starting off using a uh, wind shear and we're only doing enhanced wind shear for the chance for vulnerability we mainly have this for the two points to go into our core skills but more importantly a key passive that we have later when we use a storm nature magic skill and then we use the earth skill after like pulverize it's going to deal nine percent increased multiplicative damage so that brings us down we're going to be doing heart of the wild for increased spirit to just to get to wild impulses for increased damage but it costs even more spirit to use then of course we have where or pulverize into primal pulverize so that way enemies deal less damage to us however if you do want to use raging when you do overpower them you're going to stun them for two seconds which is nice but i do really really enjoy that they deal 20 percent less damage to me which is insane because we're always pulverizing so this is always on then we are maxing out predatory instinct for instinct for increased uh close or crit strike damage uh for close enemies as well as iron fur for even more damage reduction then we're going to come down to our defensive skills. We're doing Earth and Bulwark up into Preserving. This is going to be a really big way to uh, fortify us. Then we also have Debilitating Roar, which is not only going to fortify us, but it's also going to help uh, with some crowd control effects against the enemy. We're going to slow absolutely everybody. And then we are maxing out Ancestral Fortitude to increase our resistances by 15% as well as Vigilance. So that way we gain even more damage reduction when we use the defensive skill. That is going to be Earth and Bulwark as well as Debilitating Roar. We're going to always be able to use those. Next, we're coming down. We're skipping Companions. We're going to come down to our Wrath skills. We're going to be taking three in Crushing Earth for more damage against CC'd enemies. One into Safeguard so when we crit, we fortify even more. And then we're doing Stone Guard. While we have Fortify over 50% of our max life, we deal 12% multiplicative damage. It's insane. Uh, now, we have Mending here for uh, while in Werebear form, we receive more healing. But that's just to get to Provocation, which is one, or excuse me, one of our five ways to be able to automatically proc Overpower every 16 seconds. Then, of course, we have Trample, which is our movement skill in the build. All the way to savage to generate more spirit when we're low uh you could do the fortify but we generate enough anyway so having the extra spirit gain is actually really nice here next of course our ultimate we're taking grizzly rage into su uh, supreme grizzly rage uh, for even more fortify unstoppable and even more damage now there is a very good argument for petrify and deprimed or even supreme this is also very very good because you encase enemies in stone and we stun them and then we do increase damage so if you don't want to go the grizzly rage route you can 100 percent do petrify and it is just more than sufficient and then against bosses the damage is increased even more uh, we are going with three points in defiance for nature magic skills deal 12 percent increased damage to elites natural disaster for more um, earth skill damage against enemies who are vulnerable which is always going to happen and then we have three points into resonance which is why we have um wind shear here so we cast wind shear and then we triple the bonus afterwards if this next one to cast or vice versa so when we cast this boom and then we cast uh 
Pulverize, we're going to get that 9% increased damage. And then, of course, our key passive, which is one of the best in the game for Druid, is Urzine Strength. We gain 20% additional max life while in Werebear form. And then while healthy, we deal increased damage and increased overpower damage. So our Spirit Boons, guys, these are really straightforward, actually. Um, we have awareness for even more damage reduction, which is fine. You could you could take Advantageous Beast if you really like, or even more Max Spirit, but the damage reduction is super good in this build. Then we're doing Scythe Talons for increased crit strike chance, as well as Iron Feather to give us 14% more max life. This is absolutely insane in the build. It gives us so much life. It's crazy. And then uh, for our Wolf one, we're doing Bolster every time we use the defensive skill we fortify. However, you could really make a argument for calamity to increase the duration of our grizzly rage which is fine or you could really make a, a an argument for energize so that way when you hit proc and lucky hit you get a chance to regenerate spirit however bolster is just more efficient in the build to help keep us alive and keep our fortify up constantly so that way we're always overpowering and dealing a lot of damage and then another our last uh boon here which is another way that we can automatically have an overpower proc is obsidian slam so into the gear guys and let me talk about this again because we you saw the the starting gameplay in the beginning but we're going to do some more um this gear there's a lot of interchangeable pieces so i'll highlight which ones you actually need now vastly spare is best in slot for this build because earth skills are now wear bear skills and we're going to be able to fortify okay this is very very helpful on top of all the overpower damage that you're going to get However, if you don't have that, a regular helmet is just fine. And you can put, like, Disobedience in it or something like that. Or for bosses, you swap out into God Slayer. Next, we have um, Instable. Instable? Not Instable. Insatiable Fury. Uh, this is best in slot here, guys. You're going to get the three extra ranks. Then you have all the damage reduction as well as overpower damage. Insane. Uh, in our gloves, we're doing Ursine Horror for even more overpower and... Uh, ranks and pulverize and then we uh, get the tectonic spike so it does deals a little bit more damage then we got to bolts will in the pants so that way when we dash we get 40 percent increased uh, damage while unstoppable very very important make sure we combine this with metamorphosis at level one not level three and i'll talk about that in just a second in our boots we're doing quicksand now normally i really like to do um ghost walker sure for the increased speed however we need another way to proc our umbral which is ceasing an enemy so quicksand pairs with that perfectly so damaging enemies with earth skills slows them automatically or if we have the proc from debilitating roar that'll also give us our umbral proc to help keep our spirit really high then of course the main power in the build guys you have to have shockwave we're still looking for a max roll on that that one but it creates the shockwave going forward which is what you guys see to destroy the entire screen Next, for even more overpower, we got Banish Alerts here. We got a max roll on this. For even more resource gen and crit chance and overpower. But more importantly, this is another way that we guarantee an overpower strike. When we spend 300, we our next um, attack is guaranteed to overpower and deals increased damage. You can see this little number down here after spending three. I know it can be hard when you're playing, but <clears throat> that's a little tool tip that pops up while you're playing for the build. And then last but not least, we have Retaliation. Our core skills deal increased damage based on the amount of our fortify our fortify on a twenty-four thousand life is insanely high so this is actually really really good i'm still looking for a max roll on that one <clears throat> now into vampiric powers sandra we embrace is by far the best one when we kill an enemy we fortify which helps keep us alive and then we get an uh, increased crit strike chance this paired with undying is insane because whenever we cast a skill we heal which is going to help our fortify and then we have blood boil which is our fifth way to guarantee an overpower um, this happens every 20 seconds. We get a guaranteed overpower. Super powerful for the build. And then we have Prey on the Weak. We deal increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Now, we have a few ways to make them vulnerable. In our Paragon board, we have Exploit, which makes them vulnerable. But our Metamorphos also will make them vulnerable paired with Prey on the Weak. Now, Metamorphos is our evade skill here to apply a curse and damage and to make enemies vulnerable. But the reason that we have it on level 1 is because it's paired with Tabolt's Will. I had to have Chat help me because I was like... All my other, my three other classes in, in this season have it maxed, and I didn't really realize how powerful it was. So, originally, you're like 40% increased damage while unstoppable for four seconds after. Well, if this is maxed out for four seconds, that means I get it for eight seconds total. That's a long time to have the increased damage. Well, 
We need it on level one for this second part is when you become unstoppable, you gain 50 primary resource. So if you have it at two seconds as opposed to four seconds, that means it's only six seconds. So you have more opportunities to dash and become unstoppable, which will give you more resource to keep this full so you can constantly smash. This also applies to any build that is going to run that combo. Okay. So that is the vampiric powers, guys. Super, super strong. Um, now let's go into the Paragon board. I'm just going to go over the glyphs that I'm using. All of this stuff will be linked down in the description below in the Mobilytics build link. But I'm going to show you guys the ones that I'm using. So we have Dominate for increased overpower damage and even more damage that they take from us after we overpower an enemy, which is really good. Earth and Sky, which is going to give us some nature magic skill, increased damage to CC'd enemies or vulnerable enemies. And it's really going to make our two nodes here just even stronger. Next, we have Exploit. Again, this is what's going to be making enemies vulnerable and we do increased damage to them. Then we have Guzzler. While we are super healthy, we deal increased damage. Absolutely powerful in the build. And then we have Outmatched which is going to give a bonus to our rare nodes, but we're going to deal increased um, physical damage to non-elites and bosses. This is going to help us just clean up a lot of the just trash mobs, and that is on our very first board here, which is also going to really increase these two nodes here. Super, super strong. So, guys, that is the Paragon board. I'm going to showcase a little bit more of this build just so you guys can kind of see it. Um, I've been playing this all day during the stream, and I was very disheartened to talk about and just see kind of like the fall of pulverize i still think that this build can be very very strong it can do all content the biggest complaint that i have about this is that the rotation through if you don't have a guaranteed overpower proc it really feels like the damage fall off is just so much to where i feel like it takes me forever to clear through everything um and I really wanted to highlight this during the build guide so that way I'm being 100% honest and real with you guys because I have loved Druid and Overpower was the very first build that I really did in the game that was super strong and I 100% loved it and I honestly felt like it was a lot stronger than it was this season um, and I thought it was going to be so much stronger because of all the Overpower changes so even though the build is still super good it's a very very good leveling build and it's very very easy to put together. I still think that it is lackluster when it comes to the damage in comparison to some of the like Barbarian and some of the uh, like Necromancer's overpower builds. I feel like it really just doesn't compare to those when Pulverize and Druid itself is one of the main stapled um, overpower builds in the game before all the changes that came in Season 2. Another big issue that you guys are about to see here is when we fight the boss. So it can be a little challenging and tough for us against the boss um, just because of the damage. You can see us knock, but like again, if we're not if we're not on a proc here, we are losing some damage and it can be like troublesome in a way to really just clean up a fight. Uh, but again, we are super tanky and it's a it's you know it's a lot of fun to actually play the build. You know, it takes a little bit longer. We don't have that, like, one-shot potential. Um, on, on the highest end, when we have all of our procs here, we can definitely two-shot bosses and do those kind of things. But in the end, it just really feels like um, Pulverize got, you know, hung out to dry this season. I'm not really sure why. I definitely feel like it should do more damage. So, devs, if you guys end up seeing this video, please, please, please... Just comment. I tweeted at you. Let me know what, what's the deal. I feel like I should be doing more than just north of 10 million damage at the very highest point in the game. So, guys, that's it. That's the build. I um, still really enjoy Pulverize. I played it all the way to 100. It was super fun. So, like the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Druid and Pulverize this season. And, as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.